I want to do a couple of poems for you of my own. Is that all right for you? Yeah. Can you want to come up and we'll do, do one? Yes, please. This is called Listening to Sharm Nazari. Sharm Nazari is a great uh, Persian singer who comes to this country often. And it's in the guzzle form with the repetition. Listening to Sharm Nazari. I know the horses keep galloping for miles. I know the ants keep lifting their feelers to heaven and planning new triumphs, but it's already too late. When Nazari sings, I don't care if the second Adam comes down or not. I don't care if my words get you to cry or not. It's already too late. I want you to hit that when it gets already too late. Already too late. Don't think it's wonderful it's already too late? <laughs> the smell of coffee spreads out from the fire. The wild-haired old women sing over the coffin. Go on complaining and crying. It's already too late. I know sweet vowels. I know sweet vowels and inescapable rhythms. I know how sweet it is when a young woman is here and the old men think of God. But it's already too late. It's already too late. My tongue never becomes bitter because my mouth keeps holding the grief pipe between my teeth. Go on and conquer bitterness. It's already too late. Here I am, I'm all alone. It's early morning. I'm so happy. How can so much grandeur live beneath my skin? Go on asking. It's already too late. So, I don't know if you got that or not, but there's something in language that when it says it's already too late, if there's the right music, it means it's not too late. Did you understand that? <laughs> That's a good part of that poem. It's got something to do with rebuking the one in you who wants something. It's good to say that when it's already too late. Though secretly you know it isn't. You gotta lie to some people in yourself. All right. I'm getting wise again, so we gotta go. So this is one uh, touching on the Iraq war. And um what is happening, and it's helpful what he was saying. And recently, because of the work that uh, Coleman has done with Shams and so on, it's now clear that the word Shams means the sun. It's the Middle Eastern word meaning the sun, Shams. That means that Shamson, Samson, is also the sun. That story in the Old Testament is about blinding the sun. And that's why it's going moving around. Remember how Samson did all, all the time? So I just, you, I was very surprised to realize that, and I wrote this one. Don't you see them? They are coming to blind Samson. But some of us don't want the day to end. If Samson goes blind, what will happen to the sea? Isn't it bad enough that the sun goes down each night while children throw shoes at the moon? I remember my mother's grief at sunset. Now I remember my father. I remember every father when he is wrestling with his son. O oh, Lord of the four quarters, he is destined to lose. You gypsy singers, make some raw cries. Call in the crows to fly over the plowed fields. I want the beating palms to cry out for Samson. I want rough voices and shouting women to cry out against the blinding of Samson. I will always cry, take away those knives. Isn't it enough that the evening star sets it every night and lovemaking ends at dawn? 
Please, God, help the human beings, for men are coming to blind Samson. Can I do it once more? This has been an example of mythology coming into poetry even this late. Don't you see them? They're coming to blind Samson. But some of us don't want the day to end. If Samson goes blind, what will happen to the sea? Isn't it bad enough that the sun goes down each night while children throw shoes at the moon? I remember my mother's grief, the son said. Now I remember my father. I remember every father when he is wrestling with his son. Oh, Lord of the four quarters, he is destined to lose. You gypsy singers, you know, the, the flamenco singers are the only ones who can handle something like this. You gypsy singers make some more cries. Call in the crows to fly over the plowed fields. I want the beating palms to cry out for Samson. I want rough voices and shouting women to cry out against the blinding of Samson. I'll always cry, take away those knives. Isn't it enough that the evening star sets every night and lovemaking ends at dawn? Please, God, Help the human beings, for men are coming to blind Samson. We've often talked uh, about uh, Hafez, and so we can't eat until 1 o'clock, so uh, we're okay. And I'm going to read you one poem of Hafez. Rumi is the darling. Rumi is unbelievable. Rumi is just like a huge breast giving milk hundreds of miles long. People <laughs> drown in this goddamn milk. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Someone already mentioned that little poem. Come to the garden in spring. There's wine and sweethearts in the pomegranate blossoms. If you do not come, these do not matter. If you do come, these do not matter. Now think about the beloved in relation to that, will you? Come to the garden in spring. There's wine and sweethearts in the pomegranate blossoms. If you do not come, these do not matter. If you do come, these do not matter. And then, instead of thinking about it as a, as a, as a beloved, think about it as God. 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 Uh, what is that again? There are wine and sweethearts in the pomegranate blossoms. If you do not come, ooh, these do not matter. That's the story of the United States. Our national parks don't mean a goddamn thing. If you don't come, if you don't come these do not matter. If you do come, these do not matter. And it's gorgeous, isn't it? And Coleman is such a genius because he picks up the word matter here, which is, doesn't exist in any other language in this way. And he's able to whoom, put that in there. Well, who's got another poem of Coleman's? Coleman's or me? What? Um, I saw grief drinking a cup of sorrow. Yeah. yeah. And said, it tastes sweet, does it not? <laughs> and he said, you caught me. And you've ruined my business. <laughs> How can I sell sorrow when you know it is a blessing? <laughs> Stand up and give it to everybody. <laughs> I saw grief drinking a cup of sorrow and said, It tastes sweet, is it not? And he said, You caught me and you've ruined my business. How can I sell sorrow when you know it is a blessing? Anyone else have a roomy for him, a little one? Yeah. You've heard this. You are a mountain, 
searching for your own echo. You bend double in pain and cry, oh my God. You should stay in that knowing, but you don't. The pain stops, and you return to your religious quest, mm -hmm. sometimes doubting in your mind, and sometimes your shirt torn open in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. I want to kiss you. The price of kissing is your life. Now my loving is running towards my life, shouting, what a bargain, let's buy it. <laughs> That's so short, so swift. I want to kiss you. And then the answer we get is, well, let's have some more therapy, and, uh, you know, I think we'll be able to work something out, you know. But the answer given in Persia, Persia, I want to kiss you, the answer, price of kissing is your life. That's called fierceness. That's what Blake had. Now my loving is running towards my life, shouting, what a bargain it is, let's, let's do it. <laughs> anyway, we, so he's the darling of all of that, and, um, and, um, and then Hafez uh, comes along, and Hafez is a different kind of thing. Uh, he is a warrior, of, especially for the old Zoroastrian religion against the Muslims. But he's also a warrior for the divine energy of the Muslims. And um, and then he um, uh, he's just so unbelievable. People can't believe it. I mean, all over Iran they have a, a copy of Hafez on the table. And uh, when Aaron, you know, should she marry this lunatic uh, guy? They open a copy of Hafez and see what he says. <laughs> so they use the Hafez as the way we use the I Ching. And uh, you just can't imagine the affection they have for All right, I'm going to give you one poem of Hafez and then we're going to break for lunch. In this age, the only friend we have that is free of faults is a glass of wine and a book of love poems. He's going to change the subject in every stanza, you hear me? Go by yourself on the road, for the gates of righteousness are narrow. Hold on to the wine cup, for nothing can equal the dearness of life on earth. And the wine is the wine, it, you know, the wine, you can take it as wine, but in general it's the intensity of the secret thing that you bend over and you're stunned by the beauty of a poem or something. Stunned by that. Uh, go by yourself on the road, for the gates of righteousness are narrow. <laughs> That's kind of witty. Uh, don't don't bother going with a bunch of priests, because they, they'll be too fat. You won't get through the gate. You know. <laughs> go by yourself on the road, for the gates of righteousness are narrow. Hold on to the wine cup, for nothing can equal the dearness of life on earth. Many people besides me are fed up with the passivity of this world. The, ap ap the apathy of academics rises from knowing a lot, but believing nothing. Mm, many people besides me are fed up with the passivity that is everywhere. The apathy of academics arises from knowing a lot, but believing, but believing nothing. And also could be doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Even in this noisy gateway, the eye of a spiritual intellect looks out in the world. The stuff of this world is shaky and riddled with faults. Even in this noisy gateway, the eye of a spiritual intellect looks out in the world. And the stuff of this world is shaky and riddled with faults. My heart had many hopes that it would have been able to see your face capitalized. But death is the pirate who steals every one of those hopes. My heart had many hopes that it'd be able to see your face, but death is the pirate who steals every one of those hopes. Please take in your hand the ringlets of some beauty and just leave off moaning over the noxious influence of Saturn or Venus. <laughs> he said, I'm just you know, goddamn complaining all the time. I got a lot of Saturn in my chart, you know. <laughs> and he says, just take the hair of some beautiful woman and 
and, and uh, put it in your hand like this and stop moaning about your astrological chart. <laughs> All right. And uh, the last answer is he's going to have to mention his own name. And he says, there's not a single age in which you'll find a man of knowledge who is sober. <laughs> is sober. Sober means, you know, take everything seriously and, and uh, you know the answer to everything. And he said, there's not a single age in which you'll f find a man of knowledge, that is to say, a knowing man uh, who is sober. Hava is an example. He's drunk with the wine of pre-eternity. <laughs> See, they like to go back, they, they, their history, they like to go back way before Adam till you get to the place of pre-eternity. And uh, one poem I've been working on, Hafez, is this incredible thing. It's a part of the Islamic uh, material. So in, in pre-eternity, uh, people were shaking the dice and everything, and, and, uh, and then uh, uh, the divine came and, and, uh, and offered the angels the trust that it be to be the guardian of the whole planet and everything that was going to be in this planet. Offered the angels the trust, and um, they refused. And so they threw the dice again, and the, and the thing fell on me, who is a human being and a fool. So that's the way they explain the, the confusion of the world. The angels refused to take charge, and it fell on us, and we had to do it. We don't know anything. Is that right? That's right. Thank you very much.